Okay, this lab is the copper and iron stoichiometry lab where we're going to find out the formula for iron sulfate. Uh, we're going to start with a sample of irons. These are iron filings, and I measured out 1.00 grams of iron filings. And we're going to let the iron filings react with copper sulfate and see if the product is iron 2 sulfate or iron 3 sulfate uh, after the reaction goes to completion. So we're going to weigh this empty beaker. So zero this. We'll weigh our empty beaker. And the mass of our empty beaker is 94.83 grams. Now we're going to take some copper sulfate and we're going to heat it on a hot plate. So we're heating copper sulfate on our hot plate. And we have already measured out 1.00 grams of iron. Uh, we know that when iron reacts with copper sulfate, it'll be a single replacement reaction. We know that it will produce, we know that it'll produce uh, iron sulfate and, and copper metal because iron is higher on the activity series than copper, so it'll replace the copper. Um, we don't, however, know whether it's going to make iron 2 or iron 3. Iron's a transition metal, and like many of the transition metals, it can form uh, ions with multiple charges, sometimes plus two, sometimes plus three. We want to find out what it is during this reaction. Uh, the first thing you need to do is write balanced equations. So in your pre-lab questions, you'll need to write a balanced equation for iron reacting with copper 2 sulfate to make iron 2 sulfate and copper metal. And then separately, you'll write an equation for iron reacting with copper 2 sulfate, same two reactants, but this time you'll assume that it's going to make iron 3 sulfate. And you'll see when you balance those two reactions, you get a different ratio between iron and copper. Uh, you need to do some stoichiometry calculations. So we're starting out with 1.00 grams of iron. So do the calculation assuming that it's going to produce iron 2 sulfate and see how much copper should be produced, how many grams of copper should be produced if that's the case. And then separate from that, do the calculation assuming that it's going to produce iron 3 sulfate. You'll see that it produces a different amount of copper if you're producing iron 3 versus iron 2. All right, so this doesn't need to boil. We just need to get it warmed up to help the reaction happen a little bit more easily. We're now going to take our iron filings and pour them into our copper 2 sulfate. We'll pour that in. We'll stir. And you can see pretty much right away something's happened. Uh, the iron filings, which were a blackish color, have started to become kind of more of an orangish copper color. Okay, we'll just swirl this around a bit, let it finish reacting. Turn off our hot plate now. So we had copper sulfate in excess, so the reaction, or the um, the liquid here, the solution, still has some of the blue copper color, copper sulfate color. Um, but down at the bottom, you can see that the material that's being produced is more of a copper color than the color of iron. So once we think that that has completed, what we're going to do is just pour off some of the liquid on the top. We're going to try to pour off the liquid without losing any of the copper on the bottom. So if we pour it out kind of slowly, we can get rid of the liquid, and we can keep the copper. So this is copper. Um, before we can weigh this, we need to wash it off a little bit and dry it. So I'm going to add a little bit of water. I'm just going to swirl my copper around here with some water. And then again, I'm going to pour off the liquid, um, trying not to lose too much of the copper metal. So we're just cleaning the copper off right now. Um, we're going to do the same thing one more time, but this time we're going to use acetone. So acetone is a uh, more volatile liquid, and that's going to help to uh, let it evaporate out pretty quickly and uh, clean up our copper a little bit more. So we'll have some clean, dry copper to weigh, and we can get an accurate mass. So we'll pour off as much of that acetone as we can. And now we just have copper. Uh, we need to dry this out a little bit, so we're going to set that on the hot plate. Um, acetone is a pretty volatile liquid, so it can evaporate, turn to vapor pretty easily. We'll turn our hot plate just on low. We need to be careful here because acetone is also quite flammable. So we're just going to keep that on low. It's going to cause the, uh, the acetone to evaporate and we'll dry out our copper in that way. So 
so the reaction's already taken place. Now we're just trying to clean the copper and dry it so that we can get an uh, accurate measurement of the mass of the dry copper. Um, hopefully it'll be close to one of the masses that we um, predicted based on the stoichiometry, and then we'll see which one it's closer to. And if it's closer to the, closer to the mass predicted um, in the iron two, reaction, iron two sulfate reaction, then we can conclude that during this reaction, other than copper, iron two sulfate was being produced. Or possibly it's closer to the mass we got when we were using the equation for iron three sulfate. Okay, so this is working pretty well. We have copper that is uh, for the most part pretty dried out. So there's your copper metal at the end. You can see it has the distinct copper color. Uh, it's no longer the the blackish color that the iron was, but more of an orange color of copper metal. And it's dry. We've removed most of the liquid, most of the water, most of the acetone. And so now it's ready for to be weighed for a final time. So we'll put it on our balance again, and we get a mass of 95.93 grams. 95.93 grams. So you'll subtract out the mass of the empty beaker, and then compare that to the calculations you did in the pre-lab and see if copper 2 sulfate or copper 3 sulfate was being produced.